So now we have some rules for the Fire Strike Servo Turret. Good ballistic skill, powerful weapons, and slightly disturbingly, it moves. Hello and welcome back to Warspex Tactics, the strategy focused 40k channel where we're all about getting the most out of our miniatures on the tabletop. In today's video we'll be taking a look at the rules for the Fire Strike Servo Turret, talking about its strengths and weaknesses and how it might fit into Space Marine armies going on. Like the Invader ATV, these seem to be fairly simplified data sheets that look like they'll be packaged with the miniatures. Both they and the Necron units don't seem to have much in the way of special rules listed, so there may be slightly more to it than the sheet is making out. However, we can get a fairly decent idea of its stat line, and roughly how it might fit in with a Space Marine army, I think. So the Fire Strike Servo Turret is a heavy support choice for Codex Space Marines. It is power level 4, and it's either 90 points or 130 points, depending on whether you're giving it the Twin Accelerator Auto Cannon or the Twin Last Talons. You can fill this thing in units of 1 to 3, which means that you could get quite a lot of them in your army, should you want to. The turrets have a stat line not too dissimilar from the Thunderfire Cannon, Weirdly, it moves 3 inches per turn, despite not really having an appearance that's really that conducive to movement, in my opinion. I'm not sure if those little foot plates are supposed to be anti-grav or something. They don't really look like it, so I sort of had a bit of a mental image of the Tech Marine getting off and sort of dragging it across the battlefield before getting back in to shoot. In any case, it has a weapon skill of 3+, ballistic skill of 2+, so highly accurate, strength 4, toughness 5, 5 wounds, 2 attacks, leadership 8, and a 2-plus save. I believe it's got the ballistic skill of 2 plus due to being crewed with a tech marine who have traditionally had a ballistic skill of 2 plus for quite a while now, and its defensive profile isn't too dissimilar from that of the Thunderfire cannon, the Thunderfire having toughness 6, 4 wounds, and a 2 plus save. Though, of course, with the Thunderfire cannon, you do get that tech marine gunner included who can potentially go off and do his own thing if the cannon is destroyed. As this thing can't hide out of line of sight, I think it is relatively fragile to return anti tank fire. You can get light battle tanks in the region between 90 and 130 points, so despite the 2 plus save, I don't think it's all that durable, seeing as it's got toughness 5 and just 5 wounds. It does seem to get the vehicle keyword, and also artillery, which helps cover a couple of major weaknesses, as it will be able to shoot into close combat hitting on 3s, which isn't bad at all to be honest, and also when it does crawl around its 3 inch movement, it means that it won't be suffering any penalty to moving and shooting heavy weapons. To be honest, I do think that that will be pretty odd for an artillery type unit of the look of this sort of thing. Though I would mention that Games Workshop doesn't appear to have included any special rules on these data sheets, so there is at least an outside chance that it might have some sort of penalty to moving and shooting. It's a change I wouldn't really mind seeing on artillery type units game wide, to be honest. In terms of its weapons, the 90 point Accelerator Autocannon platform has a bit of an unusual stat because the Accelerator Autocannons are only AP1 in this example. I honestly have no idea what's going on with this one. I'm not saying that the profile couldn't be fair for it, but I thought they would have called them Iron Hail Autocannons, much like the Invicta has, who have this exact same profile. The Accelerator Autocannons are typically the ones carried by the Suppressors, and they have AP-2 at base. I'm even more confused by the way that the Invicta's Iron Hail Autocannons seem to go up to AP-2, and we saw the leaked datasheet for that guy on Monday. I really don't know whether this is an error, or the Invicta one might be an error, or they really just have randomly swapped out the different AP characteristics. I think that one's only going to be resolved when we actually get the codex in our hands. In any case, it looks like pretty good general purpose firepower. 6 shots of ballistic skill 2 plus, with decent strength and damage, it's going to put the hurt on anything. It is the sort of firepower that you're not going to have too much of in any one army. It can chip in against hordes and can chip in against the heaviest targets as well. With a very decent range, it could be a good troubleshooter type unit to just help delete the units that need to die the most this turn. The Twin Last Talon variant is interesting. It does potentially have very potent anti-tank fire, with 4 shots at 24 inches, strength 9, AP-3, and damage D6. It seems to me to be pretty potent, although really quite short-ranged anti-tank. You're not going to be able to guarantee that this will get range on any enemy units that want to stay out of it, but if you want to have something that's going to deny vehicles wanting to go into the midfield, then it might not be the worst shout in the world. In any case, if a toughness 7 or 8 vehicle does happen to stray into its range, then you'll average something around 6 or 7 wounds on the thing. Very heavy firepower, though fairly easy to deal damage to in return. In terms of potential chapter synergies, Ultramarines could be useful for dropping back and firing, although to be honest with only 3 inch movement, if the enemy does happen to have surrounded you in any way whatsoever, then you might struggle to be able to get out of range of the enemy engagement range. Iron Hands are generally excellent with vehicles, but a 6 plus feel no pain type save does no harm to these guys. It's a nice rule to have on multi wound models. Imperial Fists will like the ignoring cover. Raven Guard will like being in the equivalent of light cover, particularly for a few of the autocannon variant that are sat at the back. 
and Salamanders might do quite nicely with their re-rolls, which are pretty solid on both variants. It'll be interesting to see if Death Watch get this. Again, anti-tank firepower and long-range firepower are things that Death Watch could easily have more of. We'll have to see if there's any sort of unit restriction for them. Weirdly enough, for Dark Angels, the chapter that likes to stand still, they unfortunately don't have amazing synergy with them, just because they're plus one to hit that they'll be getting in the new codex. Won't make any difference whatsoever if you're already hitting on a 2+. It could counter modifiers, but that's about it. Out of the two options, I feel that the auto cannons are probably the more reliable way to go. Sat at the back of the deployment zone, I could see these guys being ignored, particularly if you happen to be using a fair few other armoured targets. The last talons just seem a bit expensive and glass hammerish to me. They're certainly scary if they can get in range, but if your opponent wants to, then they could potentially outrange them. It does have its merits to forcing them back into their own deployment zone, but it could be a bit sad having something like 400 points worth of last cannon shots sitting doing absolutely nothing just because your opponent's been able to move away. You really would have to deploy them quite far forward in your deployment zone, which would make it very easy to take them out as well. I think their strengths are pretty obviously the raw firepower that you get, but it does have trade-offs in terms of durability, and also the very slow movement range, which might struggle to get them into line of sight. In-game, seeing as they seem to be able to move and shoot with no penalty, at least until we find out anything else, it seems like it might be a good idea to stick them behind cover, and then just move them three inches out to be able to see the enemy, and open fire that way. It might allow you to keep them safe on your opponent's first turn. Otherwise, it's probably just going to make sense to deploy them with the maximal amount of fire lanes. With three-inch movement, they're just not going to be able to redeploy, so if there are any good lines of sight about, then it might just be worth capitalising on that. I think they're certainly a unit that you'd like to screen quite a lot, which could be pretty hard for those last talons deployed up the front. Melee won't exactly stop them shooting, as they'll just be able to blaze away into close combat, but it will stop them firing at the unit that's actually important to take out, and also potentially stop the rest of your army from targeting that unit that they're in combat with. Might pair well with some ranks of intercessors or incursors up the front. In terms of competitors within the Codex, it's got a similar feel to the Thunderfire Cannon, but again I do feel that they're very different units. Not needing line of sight means that the Thunderfire Cannon's relatively weak durability isn't really that big a deal, where it's going to be far more of an issue with these. Suppressors aren't so very different from the firepower of the Auto Cannons. Point for point, at least against light armoured targets, it looks like these servo turrets could be a little bit stronger, though you are losing useful infantry, fly and movement abilities. I think the two are fairly well balanced, to be honest. For close range anti-tank though, it's hard not to compare the last talons to the eradicators, who will typically do a better job of it with six anti-tank shots. I don't necessarily think that this is a terrible thing though for the servo turret, as very few units in the game will compare point for point for the anti-tank fire of eradicators at the moment. I think it says a lot more about them being strong than this being weak, and it does have a very similar damage output against toughness 8 targets. Overall, it does seem to me that the fire strike servo turret could have a good place in a space marine army, though for the good firepower you do lose something in flexibility and movement. Let me know your thoughts on these guys down in the comments below. Feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics if you'd like to see similar unit reviews like this. And if you have been enjoying the videos on the channel, I'd just like to mention that I have a Patreon page, which is down in the video description below. Making all of these videos does take quite a bit of time, and if you are enjoying regularly, then any support is greatly appreciated. Channel Patreons get to see a video a week early, there's regular votes and polls to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and you're also automatically entered into the prize giveaway, which happens at the start of each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description below. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.